So, good afternoon and welcome uh, to the ABG Sundal Collier Investor Days here at Haymarket. So, my name is Rickard Andekrans. I'm an equity research analyst within healthcare at ABG. And I'm very happy to present Intervac, the animal health vaccine company. So, uh, here with me today I have uh, Andrea Sanderson, who will, who's the CEO of the company, and he will tell you more about the technology, platform, and the commercial potential going forward. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, my name is Andreas Andersson, I'm, I'm the CEO for Intervac. And we develop modern vaccines within the animal health, so veterinary vaccines. Uh, how many here are, uh, have listened to my speech earlier in, in August? Could you raise your hands? Okay, so it's uh, in some of you, so good. It's always good to know who, who are new. Uh, and haven't uh, listened to your presentation before, and uh, how many are, have, have followed us for a while. Uh, we're listed on the First North Growth Market, and in the pipeline right now we have three vaccines. We have one for horses, one for pigs, and, and one for cows. And uh, we're going to spend some time on, on all of those, and our vaccine for horses are the one that's most progressed, and we are now in the uh, regulatory phase. Okay, so this is, this is Strangvac. It's our vaccine against strangles. That's a bacterial disease that affects horses. In Sweden, it's Kvarka. And uh, uh, we have just last week, in the beginning of last week, we have the, there was our... Uh, validation batches were released. So we have just produced 60,000 vials, uh, and this is an important step uh, in preparation for our filing of our dossier to EMA. So in, before we file, uh, we have to show that we can produce, we have two batches of commercial scale, in the scale that we are then going to uh, produce when we're in the commercial phase. So this is now, uh, we have now achieved this successfully within specification, and we press released this uh, last week. Uh, so in those batches of, of uh, two batches of 30,000 vials of each, we, the, the active ingredients are from the batches that we produced earlier this summer, uh, where we produced active ingredients for a few million doses. So that was the drug substance. And now we have produced the full drug product, the full vaccine. And what's next now is now we're in the final uh, phase of preparing the dossier that we are planning to hand in in the beginning of next year. So tentatively in uh, the end of, of February. So, and this is a little bit later than we had planned. We had, I had earlier communicated that we were going to file this uh, by the end of, of this year. So, but, so it's, a, it's a couple of months later than I expected earlier this fall, but it's still, we're still on track and uh, it's ev it's everything is going very well. So now those products have been produced and we're just preparing the dossier. It's, it's a good file of you know, a thousand pages. Uh, and we're preparing this dossier together with experts, external experts, that has uh, filed for over 100 uh, vac veterinary vaccines before. So, uh, so we take the, this advice from them very seriously in order to, to prepare uh, a very solid dossier uh, that lays a, a good groundwork to have a, a smooth process. Uh, the next step now after the filing is that then EMA has uh, 210 days to process uh, th this file before an approval. Uh, now the clock stops when EMA asks us questions. So our estimate that this process is about one year. It could go a little bit faster, it could go take a little bit longer. It depends on what type of questions EMA will ask us and how long it takes us to answer them. But we're so in order to have a, a smooth and fast process, we have, we're, we are putting effort into making the best possible dossier that we can in, in submitting for this submission. So
So I'm very proud of this, and I think it's going very well. So it's an exciting, an exciting time. Uh, another thing that has happened since we last met in, in August. So here in the in, uh, in the middle of September, we had a directed share issue uh, that was very successful, and uh, we had uh, we got the chance to to take in some uh, uh, institutional investors, strategic in institutional investors. So we did a directed share of uh, uh, this six million euro or sixty two million Swedish crowns. And the subscribers were Ruber, Fjärde Opfond, and, and Health Invest, all known and very solid uh, investors. Uh, so this was a good uh, next step for the company. Uh, so we have a good mix of, of uh, owners. Uh, it was also interesting that in, in at the same time, uh, Länsförsäkringar had the opportunity to also invest in the company uh, by buying out one of the previous owners. And uh, they are, have now... Uh, uh, also a significant share of the company. Lensfrecken has an interesting uh, connection to our future business here since they are the, the sole owner of Agria, who's very dominant in, in uh, insurances for, for within uh, animal health. So that's uh, all in all, I think this is really exciting and good, good news. It lays a good foundation for, for our... Uh, preparation with the dossier, our market launch, and also for uh, the, the development of our other vaccines in our pipeline. So we're going to talk about that also. So just I'm going to go through this a little bit quick for you who are new, just to introduce you to, to our sector if you're new to animal health. So uh, animal health is divided, often divided up into two sectors, companion animals and farm animals, so companion animals, cats and dogs, far, far more production animals, more swine and poultry and livestock. Uh, and this segment as a whole is growing. The underlying growth factor here is, is for companion animals. We tend to spend more and more money on our pets. Uh, and for production animals, farm animals, the, the demand for animal protein in form of meat and milk is globally is, is growing. So uh, those, this sector as a whole is, is, uh, is growing uh, solidly. Also new types of treatments are coming into the sector. Uh, then you're talking about core animal health, which is basically medication, pharmaceuticals, uh, which uh, vaccine is an, is an important part of. And uh, this core animal health is about 35 billion US dollar annually. Uh, and it's growing uh, four to six percent. The latest numbers for last year was that there was 5% growth for, for this core animal health. Vaccine is one of the fastest growing segments within that, uh, with a growth of 6 to 10%. So it's a very nice uh, space to be in. Uh, the, the market is uh, dominated with a, by a, a number of big uh, companies. Uh, the biggest big five, soon to be four. Uh, uh, led by so these are 2018 numbers except for Seva that hasn't released their 2018 numbers yet. So Suetis so uh, is the biggest one with 5.8 billion US dollars, uh, solid 10% growth over last year. And then second now is going to be Elanco, who has uh, announced that they're going to buy animal uh, buy your animal health, and um, uh, followed by Boehringer and Merck. It's uh, it's a very healthy. Um, business uh, with a lot of activity and uh, mergers and acquisitions. And it's notably that those uh, larger companies are also uh, buying up uh, smaller companies or filling their portfolios with, within growth sec sectors such as vaccines. So uh, for example, so did uh, Seva uh, this summer, they, they acquired the IDT animal health uh, vaccine business. Uh, it's a very positive regulatory climate. The focus uh, around one health, which is to connect human health, animal health, and the environment, it, it, it has a, a lot of attention and focus from authorities, which makes for us it's it's we see that it becomes a little bit easier to get the approval, or or they try to speed up the process to get approval, and there's also a good uh, opportunity to get different kind of support and incentives. 
uh, one of uh, the focuses areas within uh, One Health is the, the fight against antibiotic resistant bacteria and try to reduce the use of antibiotics, especially within animal health. And we, we see that uh, one, when you reduce the use of antibiotics, uh, the, the need for uh, vaccines increase of two reasons. One is that it's, a, it's uh, an important tool and an alternative to, to treat uh, uh, with uh, vaccines instead of treating with uh, um, uh, antibiotics. Uh, for vaccines, it's a preventive measurement, whereas in, in antibiotics, it's, it's when the, peop when the uh, animals are sick. But it's also that with less antibiotics, uh, the pressure uh, on some of those herds to increase so that the, there are more, more um, bacteria uh, infections that, that uh, exist in those uh, farm animals. So you can see that uh, when the market for antibiotics uh, go down, the market for vaccines uh, increase. And, and uh, vaccines now is, a, is a highest, uh, the biggest product groups within animal health in Europe and is growing fast outside of Europe as, as well. So, so that is uh, the background kind of market what we uh, uh, work in. Now if I try to explain a little bit more what exactly we do. So, so we develop uh, vaccines uh, using a technology platform that is based on recombinant uh, proteins or fusions of recombinant proteins. And, and uh, so conventionally, uh, when you make a vaccine, you take a bacteria and then you weaken this bacteria in one way or another so that you're, when you, uh, and you use that <laughs> as a component in the vaccine. So, so when you in inject the, the vaccine, you should get a, a good immune response, but you shouldn't get sick. So what, what we do is that uh, we tailor uh, those components in the vaccines uh, much more uh, deliberately. So uh, you, if you look at the uh, bacteria, then you have certain uh, surface proteins that uh, initiate the, 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 the immune response in your, in your body. And what we do is that we choose uh, a number of those important uh, surface proteins. And then you take the, the DNA structure from this and then you create a, a, a string of, uh, or a fusion of that DNA string. You put that into a plasmid that you put in an E. coli bacteria, and then you produce those uh, molecules. So if I'm, I'm a bacteria, and, and we say that uh, this surface protein, my hand is important, my, my nose is another surface protein that's important, my, my ear is another surface protein that's important, then we take the DNA strings from those different parts. And we put that together into one fusion, and out comes then a, a molecule uh, that consists of my hand and my nose and my ear. So, and the beauty of this is that it becomes a, a completely safe vaccine. So the safety profile is excellent, but it, it also allows us to, to genetically engineer the components in those vaccines so that we can target uh, more efficiently. So that is what we do, and that is to your question, what is a recombinant protein vac based vaccine? So why are we so good at this? Uh, so uh, our research teams, uh, we have a research team at COI and SLU, and they have worked within this field for 30 years. Uh, one of our founders uh, and our uh, sh uh, chief scientific officers, Professor Flock, is, is sitting here today. And uh, they are in the absolute forefront of this technology and been working with this for 30 years. And some of those uh, were, were the first to, to synthesize some of those uh, surface proteins, especially around Staphylococcus and st Streptococcus. Uh, so, and we focus around those bacteria that we have the absolute most experience around. Uh, and then we have also been in this business of veterinary vaccines for 30 years. Uh, so we combine our vast experience uh, from research and, and field experience with a very narrow focus. 
And that allows us to be in the absolute forefront when it comes to the development of veterinary vaccines using recombinant proteins, especially around those bacterial diseases. So that is the reason why we can be so, so good at, at what we do. I'm going to talk a little bit about our development pipeline. So first we're going to talk about the, the Strangvac, our vaccine against the quarka or strangles, that, uh, that is a disease that uh, affects horses, where we're in a regulatory phase. And then we're going to talk about uh, our vaccine against Deftococcus series infection that is for at with pigs, piglets. And then uh, Staphylococcus aureus diseases, <coughs> where we're focusing on a problem that <coughs> with dairy cows, uh, mastitis. So we're going to take a dive into those three projects. We, we start with Strangvac, uh, this vaccine. So Strangvac, uh, or strangles, the disease, Kvarka, is the most frequent diagnosed infection equine disease in the world. Uh, it's, uh, it's highly contagious. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite nasty. It's, it's, uh, it's sometimes lethal, uh, but most horses survive. Uh, but but um, it, um, it creates... Var, uh, uh, I forgot the English now. Var, <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, and, and, and the horse can suffocate. Uh, the outbreaks are very costly to control. In, in Sweden, you have to isolate the stable for uh, three weeks uh, after the, the last horse has been diagnosed as, as strangles free. So this can have con catastrophic consequences for, for the stable if it's a riding school or a competitive horse uh, or, or, or any horse owner. So it's, it's a well-known disease, it's a clear medical need and um, there's no efficient vaccine available today. Uh, here are some, uh, I have some, some uh, examples of outbreaks in first here in Engl uh, English, in English. So this one was uh, here in, in Yorkshire, in now in August 2019. Uh, they had to close down for seven weeks, which is, is about normal. Uh, I have another example where um, this, this I think I mentioned the last time also. This was in Hong Kong earlier this year. Uh, where they had those real expensive race horses that were bound for Hong Kong from New Zealand, and and they were uh, stranded at this time for for seven months. So that was ex extremely expensive. Uh, it's very easy to 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 find Swedish example as well. There's there's one on the the radio out in Söderköp, I think it was uh, uh, yesterday. So there's about uh, 75 to 100 of those outbreaks in Sweden per year. Uh, and you can follow those uh, on, on a map. That, uh, so, uh, and it often becomes at least local news on the radio or, or local TV stations. So this, this goes on uh, frequently. Now, our market here, there are, there are roughly 60 million horses in the world. Uh, and uh, we are going for the global market. Uh, our primarily market is first is, is Europe and, and uh, North America, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Turkey, Middle East. So I would say in those, in those uh, primarily markets, it's just roughly about <coughs> a third of those 60 million horses, roughly about 20 million horses. In those markets, 30 to 60% are medicated horses that they see a vet regularly or or are in a vaccine prog program today. And I think that's a reasonable market to target for us to, to reach. Uh, even though uh, vaccination rates and medication rates for, for all of those horses are, is a growing segment. So I think that we, for a long foreseeable future, has, has a growth market. So we are uh, planning to, to reach this market uh, by our own sales force in the Nordics, and in the Baltics, where we are selling vaccines today and have distribution of other products today. And then for the global market, we are in discussions with, with global partners for distribution agreement or licensing agreement. And those partners are on the, from that list you saw earlier of the, of the top 10 uh, companies. And, and we are in discussions with, with several of those 
and the interest to distribute this vaccine is, is very high. So uh, we don't feel that we are under stress to close any of those uh, distribution partner agreements. We are, our position is getting stronger and stronger uh, with the results we have and the closer we get to, to filing. Uh, but it's, it's, we have said and communicated that, that uh, it's reasonable to expect one of those distribution agreements within the next uh, six months. But we don't feel stressed about it. We, we negotiate from a position of strength. We have a really good product. And now with the funding we have in our back, uh, we're not under financial pressure either. But the interest is really high, and I think we have uh, the good partners to, to work with. Sum up, really good effic efficacy on our vaccine, a clear medical, uh, medical need, unmet medical need. Um, there's uh, significant symptoms, even if you would get uh, the horses that do get sick, they have significantly reduced symptoms. Uh, 12 minimum 12 months memory cells. So when you enter into vac when, when you vaccinate, you enter into vaccination program. So our uh, tentative vaccination schedule now would be that you vaccinate three times the first year, and then that you vaccinate once or twice per year is what we think that most horses will do. So it's from an investor point of view, it's it's, it's recurring revenue. Uh, so you 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 grow your market and you. Uh, you launch into new countries and horses uh, enter into the vaccination program and they stay in the vaccination program. And then it's about 5% of the, of the horses are, are uh, newborn horses, so to say. So I think there's good, solid growth and uh, opportunities here where you can grow geographically and pen also penetrate uh, within each country. Uh, I think I would also like to point out that it's intramuscular administration, so uh, the, that the, this vaccine is administrated by I, I, in the horse uh, side. So, so it's just as, as uh, the veterinarian would like to, to administrate this vaccine. Okay, let's let's dive into um, let's, uh, our, our other vaccine projects. So. Uh, just want to add some finishing notes on the pipeline projects and uh, maybe I can ask one question so just to all right so uh, our vaccine against uh, piglets uh, or for piglets against Septicoccus suis we're now in the phase we're testing this in piglets we're still in preclinical test phase uh, but we're test we're testing vaccine candidates or, uh, so good uh, uh, so find the right uh, components the right uh, molecules uh, this is a it's a great market. This, there's uh, uh, stricter regulations on the on the antibiotics, uh, higher need for for this type of of uh, products. There's uh, one billion pigs in the world. It's, they're very used to vaccinate already today, and uh, so so that's a great potential market. Uh, we have some capacities capacities in this vaccine that's very important for for this type of market. Uh, we have another vaccine for cows. That's also a great market. That's, that's in the pipeline. Good patent and strategy. Uh, okay, takeaway. <laughs> Growing market, prioritized uh, by the regulators. We're looking for, we are on track for, for uh, to, file in, to hand in the dossier beginning of next year. Uh, approval then late 2020 or beginning of 2021 and then following a market launch. Address. So just um, a, f a quick final question. So when can we expect an update on the pipeline projects targeting uh, piglets and, and dairy cows uh, in terms of uh, new updates from um, the, the clinical activity there? Okay, yeah, that's a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, so this is, uh, for, for our other projects, we are making good progress, uh, but it's still R&D. And, and we normally we have communicated when we make significant uh, results, something that we pa patent, for example. Mm. So th that could then that would be a time to communicate. Uh, or if we have a, uh, if we have a ready uh, vaccine in lab scale that we then want to, to scale up, that would also be. So, but I can't, I, I'm not going to promise any timeline on that. Mm. But we're using the same technologies, same teams. Uh, and uh, I think it looks very promising. 
Interesting. Thank you very much, Andreas, and uh, thank you all for listening. Have a good afternoon. Thank, thank you. you.